Two for the stars. This is the Produce Your Own Life podcast. Life is a script. It's time to write your story. Welcome your host, actor, director, producer, writer, and author of the recently released book, Shattered, A Journey Through the Pieces, the man who inspires millions through storytelling and interviews, the one, the only, Rodney Damon Collins. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, here for round number two. I'm working with my uh, guest, actor Shane Costa, working to getting getting him into the interview. So uh, before he comes in, um, wanted to see how everybody's doing. This is the Produce Your Own Life show. My name is Rodney. I am the host and creator of the show. Make sure you go to YouTube, subscribe to the Produce Your Own Life network. This show is really growing, and it's, you know a lot of people are <laughs> enjoying it. So I appreciate appreciate everyone who's been checking it out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook soon to come to LinkedIn and other networks. Also, <laughs> when you uh, go to YouTube, make sure you like it. Please give a like on there because that'll put it in the rotation with uh, YouTube's algorithm, make it stream more. Appreciate that love. And it's available on every streaming podcast platform out there. So Apple, Spotify, Google, CastBox, there's a ton of them, iHeartRadio. So you go to the Produce Your Own Life uh, podcast, and you'll be able to subscribe. With that being said, uh, I hope you guys are doing pretty well today. This Tuesday, April 6th, can you believe we are pretty much in the second quarter of the year already and COVID's still around? <laughs> you know, many of us at this time last year were wondering how long we were gonna have to deal with this thing. And it looks like we're gonna be dealing with this thing for a lot longer than we planned. I don't know how you're dealing, but I hope you are taking care of yourself, your mental health, your spiritual health, your physical health. Stay in good spirits, surround yourself with the right people. It is very important that you do this during this time because um, a lot of people are struggling. A lot of people are struggling with the mindset because of COVID and you know a lot of jobs are being affected, a lot of careers are being affected. I just wanna make sure you guys are staying well out there and taking care of yourselves. Never, never, never leave your, your life in the hands of a situation or circumstance You know to dictate your, come, your outcome. We are responsible for being the owners and the producer of our own life. We must make sure that we are the ones who are personally accountable for the outcomes in our life. I am a man of faith, so faith plays a critical role in everything I do. My faith, um, it strengthens me. My faith guides me. My faith gives me the hope and um, gives me the energy too at times. So those are some of the things I use. Uh, which helps me to keep going and realize that, um, hey, what's up, Sherry? How you doing, girl? Thanks for watching. Yeah, my act, uh, my guest, Shane, he's trying to connect his computer right now. His, his, uh, his camera, he said he's not connecting. So I am responding to him right now in a text message uh, to see what's happening. So give me one second to respond to him. Uh, respond to him. Sherry, I got to get you on the show so you can talk about uh, your business. So we we'll have to do that. Let's see. <clears throat> Sorry about that, everybody. But this is what happens when you do a live show. Sometimes you have to call audibles, and that's one thing I'm very good at. I used to play football, not call it audible. But until Shane gets in, I'm just sharing and seeing how everybody's doing, checking on everybody. There's a lot of stressful things going on. You know, I, I about the stimulus and everything that the government's doing is cool, but at the end of the day, you know, that is not going to make the difference in your life. Hey, well, oh, thanks a lot. Thanks for the love, Joe, John. That's thanks for the love. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, Sherry, I have to reach out to you. This is um, after today. I'm going on a little mid-season break for about three weeks or so just to focus on some stuff I need to do. Then I'll be coming back with. Oh, here we go. I see Shane in there. We, so, all right, that's my man. So without further ado, uh, my guest for today for the show, uh, he has appeared and he's known for being on uh, HBO's Ballers, which I loved that show when it was on. Uh, and he also is known for ABC's Blackish, which another show that I love. Uh, without further ado, let's show some love to my special guest today as we talk about his career and he's going to share a story and you guys are going to be encouraged to be lifted up. 
bring to bring to the stage my man actor Shane Costa. Boom. Oh. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? How's everybody? Hey, Rodney, I appreciate you. Forgive me a lot of technical difficulties. I apologize to everybody uh, for being late. Um, as you can hear, I got stuff going on outside, and then we had like an ambulance and rescue and everything else showing up. Uh, you know, like really close blocking everything off. So I was just trying to hurry up and get everything done. But uh, listen, I'm greatly honored and, and uh, you know, thankful. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Man, brother, thank you. Uh, I think we were connected by Ron, a uh, good friend of both of ours, Ron Smith. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's how we got connected, man. Uh, I think it was towards the end of 2020. So, and uh, I'm glad to have you as a guest on my show. Checked out your career, man. It's very impressive. And, man, Anybody who does what we do and can and can can stay in there, it's, it's impressive because what we do is not easy, as a brother. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, absolutely. It takes a, it takes a, forget the skill of acting. The the fact uh, that you can get up on camera in front of a bunch of people and just uh, forget that everybody else is there. Because I saw you real too, man. I, uh, very impressive. I, you know, I got you. I checked you out as well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I appreciate that, man. You know, it's it's definitely a journey. This is a journey, man. And and with that being said, this is about you. So let, let t- tell us, fill us in about, you know, Shane Coster. You know, let, let my audience know who you are. Man. Uh, well, I was raised in South Florida. I was uh, born in Hollywood, Florida. So I guess Hollywood was just uh, meant to be sooner or later. Um, but, uh, you know, it was pretty rough. Uh, I got out of the neighborhood, uh, joined the military, joined the Navy, and uh, went overseas. Didn't want to be a, a part of that, uh, the stuff that was going on in my neighborhood at that time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, used my GI Bill, got a video degree. I was actually, I had a, a major uh, recording contract, but I didn't know the business. So everybody I knew knew music, so it didn't make sense for me to, to pursue um, education when it came to music when everybody else was winning Grammys and stuff like that. So, uh, so I learned uh, the video business, and then uh, I spent 20 years behind the camera. Wow. And... Uh, from there, uh, you know, I got a phone call uh, because, you know, I try to post everything positive on my social media and somebody that I knew from uh, high school was like, hey, how did you get out of gang life and get out of this? And, uh, you know, I was just, uh, you know, I helped her out and come to find out she was actually uh, an actress that was well connected in Hollywood um, prior. Like when I went overseas, uh, you know, she became an actress and uh, she hooked me up with Lori Wyman. Um, I didn't even know what a casting director was at the time. Um, <laughs> You know, which was, you know, she's a casting director. I was like, okay, maybe that's just a different name for a different project or something. And uh, she said she had this, uh, this show with Dwayne Johnson that she wanted me to be in. So I asked her what kind of camera she wanted. And she was looking at me like, you know, actually, you know, acted kind of like, like what, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, what are you talking about? So, uh, you know, um, and it came at a time when I was almost homeless. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. you know, I almost lost my retirement. Almost, I mean, it was just at a really, really bad time. And, um, you know, and, and this was the first uh, series of breaks. And I'll say, uh, you know, it came after I, you know, I finally gave up and, you know, gave my life to God and just things started just, uh, you know, happening like one thing after the other. Uh, became a cameraman uh, for the Dolphins uh, briefly while I was filling in for somebody. And then, uh, then it was time to come back home to Orlando. And I live right next to Full Sail. So, you know, I was practicing every Saturday. You know, I was going through the cold reads. I was going through the auditions. I was, you know, doing short films and stuff. And then Blackish popped up. So, uh, you know, it, you know, it's just been, you know, it's it's been five years already. But uh, at the same time, you know, I'm I'm moving forward. But you know how this is. It still feels like I'm standing still until actually everything gets going. So that's kind of what it is. How about yourself? How are oh. you? Oh man, I'm doing I'm doing great. I, I'm I'm definitely feeling encouraged hearing your story, man. It, uh, I, I love hearing the journey because everybody's story is very unique, and I have some very uh, good friends who are mentors uh, in the industry and been in the industry a long time. And they, one of the first things I asked, and when I first like really just got fully all the way in acting, it was nothing else but my acting career. I was like, man, like how do you get to that next level? And they was like, Rodney, I can't tell you that, but I can tell you that everybody has their own journey. And if you hang in here long enough, you're going to see your fruit. You're going to see the fruit of the journey. What do you think? Oh, uh, well, definitely. Um, I, And it's funny, you know, I always heard the term that, you know, you're always where you're supposed to be. God's always going to put you there at the time. 
And, um, you know, here I did, you know, uh, I did 26 years combined service in the Navy. I did 14 of active, then I got called back for 9-11. As a, and, uh, you know, I wanted to do more time. And then when it came time to retire, my paperwork was messed up. So I felt like while everybody was doing everything on the outside, I was like missing my time on the inside. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, I'm 51 now and, and, you know, I don't mind saying that, you know, I won't tell the cast. Hey, you look good. You look good. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, but uh, you, you know how it is when you see everybody else around you doing things and you're not. So it's like, uh, you know, I felt like I was losing time. And, uh, you know, if y'all don't know about how social media works, man, my, my uh, all my success has came off of uh, social media through Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, Clubhouse, you can talk directly to to uh, the actors who are actually doing it. I talked to Jeremy Brandt, who was the Capital One guy. Um, I'm talking to uh, Chris Bivens on, on Clubhouse now. Uh, who he's got a million followers, so he doesn't really understand who I am yet. But I get to see, hear all this knowledge from all these people. Uh, yes, I'm also yes. a, a member of the Hollywood Winter Circle, which is with Wendy Elaine. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Love that. Wendy. But yeah. you know, um, you know, that was one thing that that I said it to myself is like, because um, I had this, uh, I got this saying that I use when I mentor kids or, or talk to kids, and I would strongly believe in this. And I did this while I was in the Navy. Uh-huh. Is if there's a million people going up for the job and they can only choose one be that one and uh, what i mean by that is find out who has the authorization to give you that you know so many times in the music industry in the music industry as well as acting and everything we go to all these people that we think we know but they have they don't have the keys to put you into the spot that you're supposed that you want they're like oh yeah do this do that and you're following all these other people but they don't have the authority Right. So, so with Wendy, you know, after getting on all these social media platforms and, and seeing who Wendy was, I was like, man, I, you know, um, the other thing, I'm, I'm kind of go back and forth to show you the format here, but my mm-hmm. thing is, is relationships. Even with you, you know, just talking to you naturally and stuff like that. And, and, and I learned this from Stephen Sears as well. We were both on it. Stephen Sears is the creator of Xena, and he's written for Riptide and uh, the swamp, uh, excuse me, swamp thing, and all kind. Of, I mean, the guy's just—he's he, probably one of the best writers in Hollywood. And uh, you know, I got to talk to him while I was in college, and he was like, "Listen, you want to, you want to make it, care about people first before you care about the business." And um, it's always been that way. So I got with Wendy. Wendy hooked me up with uh, with uh, Amy Linden. Mm-hmm. I went and I saw Amy in, in Atlanta and uh, got some coaching. Because uh, now that I had people that were bringing me in on these projects, uh, that they took the time, you know, and basically put the name on the line for me. I was like, well, hold on, let me go invest and make sure that, uh, you know, they understand that it wasn't, you know, taken for granted. I didn't take it lightly. Um, and uh, Amy had this really wonderful thing uh, that, that in her um, Linden technique, which is 15 different things uh, to learn about auditioning, it was like, I have that book too. Let me tell you, the, uh, I just got my first recurring role doing her technique, and 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 the one thing that I remember the most was, you know, remember your purpose while you're there. I'm only a co-star. I'm not a star. Uh-huh. And the way that it was taught to me is like, imagine you're paying Denzel all these millions of dollars, and here I come with nobody, and I'm trying to outshine him, and they paid him all this money. Right. You, you know, me being the investor, I'm like, oh no, no, you got, I got to get rid of you. You ain't, yeah. I got, brand new, I got a brand new Lamborghini. I'm not trying to have the Toyota show me up. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, so when I learned that lesson, um, you know, after I read the script and everything like that, and I was like, okay, so who's the star? Who, who is it that I'm supposed to, you know, who were they paying all this money to? Right. So once I learned learned that and who I was there to cater to, even though I'm there to play my part. I'm yeah. there to make the star look good. Thanks. Right. Once you learn that 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 team player thing, um, I mean, for me, it just it opened my eyes. So uh, you know, now I got my first recurring role um, that'll be on two networks, and uh, I can't wait to you know, like the people that are involved with this. It's just amazing. The two executive producers, uh, the two networks, the people that I'm actually acting with, and I yeah. mean, I'm I'm in the mix with everybody. Um, I'm actually. Uh, on a couple of uh, episodes through the season, I got to know everybody, and um, you know the character is so explosive, and you know to be that close with these uh, with these stars, you know, yeah. young and, and and veterans and everything, and I get to be right in the mix of that, and 
you know, the family camaraderie. This is this is on a whole another level for me this time, and, it, and it's just uh, you know how I'm grateful to everybody. Man, you you getting me so pumped up because I'm listening to your <laughs> and it, it's a, it's amazing. But you said some very important things in there about you know being there for other people. You know, really like that's how I look at one. My faith is very critical. It's, my personal life is you know faith has guided me. I got to be married 25 years. Work. I have to work every day of being a good husband because I'm not always the best husband. <laughs> I have to work every day of being the best father. I got two great kids. Well, they they're adults now. My son is out of college. He's an actor. My daughter runs her own business and is engaged. I was like, all this stuff. Who I am privately needs to be seen publicly and vice versa. So, but right. that's when I started living my life, man, and my faith and my your character is so important. You ever listen to Inky Johnson? You say who? Inky Johnson. Oh, yeah, 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 because yeah, E.T. Yeah. E. bring him up sometimes. That's his guy. Yeah, yeah. I actually uh, I did camera work for him at, uh, at the Waldorf a few years ago. And I mean, I followed him before that. And when I found out that he was actually speaking, I'm actually going to be his camera guy. I was like, I flipped. And people are like, yo, what are you flipping? i like, dude, you got to understand. You got to listen to this guy's story. Yeah. But, um, but he was talking about just that, about, you know, um, when, he, when he, you know, after he went through everything that he went through, is it that, uh, you know, how can he be the best person for you? How can I be the best person? I got to give the best husband to my wife, the best father to my to my kids, the best business partner to my, like, it was all about service. And I was like, wow, that's a that's a really um, awesome way to like look at things. You know, how am I doing this for others? I mean, this is cool. I mean, I want everything that I want, but right. um, the service, you know, being service to others is what's gonna be the key. Well, what they, uh, what's the, the quote about service? Service is the rent you pay or your time you don't hurt. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that a lot. I haven't heard it in a while, but I have heard that. Yes, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. And that's how I look at the industry we work in. Is like um, people ask me, like Rodney, how, how have you done so much with your career so quickly? I was like, man, I just came with the same attitude, man. Uh, right. I, anything. I was. I'm grateful for any type of opportunity I have to work on set. Right. And, you know, and I think that's what's important. You know, we. It's a gift to be able to do what we do. It's a privilege. So oh yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, man. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, for the people who, who, you know, I'm I'm very blessed because I'm surrounded by professional athletes. Um, you know, which you know, our comparison is the professional athlete. Um, yes. one of my one of my really good friends is Jeff Bidette. He just, uh, you know, uh, followed his journey. He was on the Vikings uh, briefly a couple of years ago, yeah. and he was released. And then, um, you know, he had to get back in the gym. He was released and he had to get, you know, like he didn't stop. He got back in the gym and he, and he worked hard. And then uh, he became one of the top receivers in the XFL. Well, then the, X, then the XFL dismantled. Now he's back to square one. He's back in he's back in the gym. And I watched this guy. I watched this guy do this. I mean, and I'm not talking about just going to the gym and casually working out. I'm talking about running routes, making sure that he was on point. He, speed coach, uh, yeah. drills, you know, fundamentals, everything. The guy was back in there. And then he wound up um, making the practice team for Washington. Yes. Well, as you know, with everything that was going up, he got bumped up. Now he's playing yeah. in the NFL. And, and like actors are the same way. I tell actors every day, like, listen, you know, just because you got the show, just because you made it to the pros, you got to practice every day till you get to the game. And, and, you know, and I tell people this, and, and, you know, like the awesome thing is that I'm surrounded by all these people who keep reminding me. That, that hey like you know you got to keep going i'm very blessed i'm very thankful that that i have these opportunities when you see this role that's coming out when you see the, what i'm playing and everything that i'm doing and the people i'm surrounded you're going to be like how the heck did he get in the middle of that and and, and that's all i'm going to you know i'll say with that but it's also going to create a, a really great opportunity to do some more public speaking um yes. and mentor kids and stuff like that so you know this role is um Man, because I, I, I don't, I can't give it away, but yeah, I understand. But it, it's it's just gonna be something that uh, is gonna shock a lot of people from my personality. Yeah, uh, but it's also gonna open up a door to have a conversation, uh, and that's what I'm looking at is is the conversation, especially with all the uh, the animosity and, and hate and everything with all the different races and and uh, gender uh, gender identification and just just so yeah. many different things that. That we're just hating each other for it and and uh 
man, this this uh, this show. I mean, it, it's going to deal with every single last bit of what you could possibly imagine. So we're bringing everything to the table with this, and the actors are absolutely amazing. But I also want to go back to uh, what you were saying about rent, uh, about services to rent. When I um, when I gave my life to God, I didn't even look at it like that. But here's here's something that I try to tell people all the time: whatever yeah. you whatever you give is going to be returned to you tenfold, if not a hundredfold. So right. every when I started changing my life around and being thankful, um, and keep in mind at this time, man, I hated life. Not that I would ever commit suicide, but I hated life, and I and I yeah. wasn't thankful. I was angry at everything, and I had to learn to be thankful first. Yeah. So as that process started happening. Um, I started seeing things happen and instead of rent, I started looking at it as like deposits in the bank is the way I looked at it. So so every time that I did a good deed or I helped somebody out, you know, I guess you could say it was kind of selfish. I was actually looking to help somebody because I knew there was a deposit in God's <laughs> bank that, that I'm like, oh yeah, I got this in the bank account. I know I did this. I know he's got me. And uh, I would actually go look to help people because I knew it would come back. Like yeah, it, it was yeah. weird. It was, it was it's kind of like just investing, and that's the way I invest. It's, it, you know, I guess it was kind of selfish, but, you know, the cool thing is, is God is always going to be who he says he is. So regardless right. of, what, you know, what my motto is or what my, my thinking is, his will always be the same. So I just knew that every time that I put that deposit in the bank, something else was going to happen. So I was good that way. I never looked at it as rent. I always looked at it as a deposit. Man, I, I love that because God does reward those like that. And um, I, my faith is in it's definitely what I, you know, I hold to. Uh, you know, I've been a Christian for a very long time since my teenage years when I really, you know, but I really, really got serious about my walk right before I got married. That's when I got really serious. And uh, it's helped me tremendously in life. And uh, my wife and I have had the chance to go over to Monrovia, Liberia to help be a part of a school, like a building project for schools. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I authored my first book. Um, and I just shared. And I worked. As, I worked as a youth minister for over ten years, so um, I know what you're talking about when it comes to kids and young young adults. Man, I love pouring into them. But one thing I'm starting to take on more now is even people in my age who are even older, because sometimes we struggle more with like, do I really have a purpose? Uh, because you know the whole emphasis oftentimes is on younger, and it's like, well, you know. So now I'm starting to even use my production on life ministry, I guess, in a way that to help other people who are in transition because many of us, especially with COVID, are going through different transitions in life. So uh, it's expanding, man. It's getting broad, but you're the essence of what my show is about. You really are. Um, oh, I like bringing on guests who really are like owning their life. You, you take your personal accountability for your life and you're going out there and you're making it. Thank you. Uh, but, but also, let me say this, like I said, um, I like no to end <laughs> it's funny because people have have taught me to you know take ownership of my hard work yeah so after, it, it took a lot of assessment for me to to start to uh speak that out loud so for anybody watching i'm, I'm going to tell you like straight up you probably will not work as hard as me and and i say that to encourage you as a competition to work as hard as me or outwork me but honestly that probably isn't going to happen um, <laughs> to be honest, with you, I put in work. I wake up at three thirty, four o'clock on most days in the morning, and I don't shut it down till about twelve thirty, one o'clock the next morning. Um, oh, be small. You know, um, it, you know, it, it, you once you get used to it, yeah, you, you can't go to sleep. You, you know, it, it, because your body and your mind and your spirit is all like, okay, we're running on this track over here. This track doesn't exist anymore. This yeah. track is for the walkers. This track is for the runners. And, and, and you know, it's just like a car when, you, you know, the way it was told is like you got a car going 80 miles an hour and then you put it on a slow track. It doesn't just go slow. It's got to start coming down. It don't it don't just get slow. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. But with that being said, there's so many people behind me this, this and I keep saying this role because, of course, it's, it's my first recurring role, but it's just so exciting. But but there were a lot of people that got me here. Yes. It, wasn't, it wasn't just the hard work. I mean, I went to the people and then the people invested in me as well. You know, I went to Jordan Woods, who played Eric on um, on The Walking Dead. He's got a facility here. Now, I was coached by Marissa, but his uh, his um, facility booked from tape in Orlando because I wanted somebody 
you know, I, I did everything that Wendy told me to do. It's like, look, you know, you got this big role. Don't don't go winging it. And, just, you know, so um, I went and, and I got coached. I had somebody who could actually see me on camera when I did my audition to make yes. sure that I was, you know, when I do it here at home, I mean, I could do it. But like, I'm not because I'm paying attention to the acting. I'm not seeing where I am in the frame. I'm not seeing where my hands are and stuff. And um, right. this scene was kind of physical. And, and Marissa was like, OK, like we understand. But you know, you got to stay in frame, your hands got to be here instead of in front of your face and this and that, and blah, blah, you know, so, um, you know, having that second set of eyes, you know, so book from tape helped me get that. Um, yeah. I've been Wendy saying, okay, this is what you need, you know, and taking all of that from Hollywood Winter Circle, and making sure my package was right, and making sure that, you know, I'm talking correctly when I talk to people. Yes. Um, which, uh, by the way, I got my manager through, through Wendy and Hollywood Winter Circle and, uh, you know, talent managers for actors. You know, and, and I have a, you know, uh, Tammy Wallace is a, is a Heller Award winner. And, um, you know, when I first started, because I promoted like I was in the music industry. Yes. And Tammy was like, look, we don't do that on the acting side. Like there's a different there's a different way to do things. And, uh, you know, we had a we had a heart to heart. And then after we had that heart to heart, things started happening again. And that's what you need a manager for uh, my agent. We were going through some things with my package and my presentation and stuff like that. And like the week later, I get the recurring role. So it's like, and and it's the other thing is my entire team is nothing but women. So, hey. uh, <laughs> so, hey, so, you know, uh, so you know, I have, you know, um, man, just uh, you know, it, I don't even know how to even speak on that other than to say that, like, man, women really they just uh, when it comes to business, uh, man, Are amazing. <laughs> women in my life have been, you know, you know, look, Wendy, Amy, my my uh, agent is Jacqueline, uh, yeah. my manager is Tammy. I mean, like, you know, it, it's it's um, you know, nothing wrong with the men because I know there's some strong men out there, but uh, but man, the women have just been amazing in my life, and and you know, let's be honest, you know, you're taking on a man and and you're doing this for a man. I mean, there's a lot to be said for that, you know. Yes. So uh, I'm grateful. Like I said, I'm grateful for everything. I'm, I'm just so, so grateful. Man, I, I want to give a note. My son is actually producing, you know, right okay. now. So I'm just going to tell him, uh, hey, Josiah, make sure you tag Hollywood Winner Circle in the comments. Because uh, Wendy is amazing. I had a chance to uh, go hang out with her here. You know, um, this was about, man, it's probably been about three years now. But she had, she had allowed 15 actors to meet up with her. She's very good friends with Michael John White. And uh, yeah, yeah. I saw that. oh man, and she that was my first time actually meeting Wendy in person and such an amazing, loving, warm person who believes in actors. And I'm telling, I tell people, I was like, man, if you want to get started, you need to go to Hollywood Winter Circle. You need to connect with Wendy. But I was like, she's going to help you build all the right systems and tools and get you with the right team. So you're right. not just losing your mind and struggling and a lost off in this path. She she helped me do the work. Uh, right. Then she allowed us to spend, you know, two and a half hours with Michael John White and talking to us, giving us advice, just hanging with us. And it was like, man, this was powerful for me, man. And so, and I'm like you, my whole team is, is women. You know, my, my agent, Courtney, my manager, Michelle, publicist jessica <laughs> you know it's just like yeah I don't, have a you know? I don't you know um, and, and I, I was just man i you know i'm considering getting a publicist but uh right now because see I'm, I'm like i said i'm on all these uh these um man congratulations on the publicist because that's that's some yeah. work in itself um yeah but uh to go back to wendy real quick uh you know like when i got my manager and like you know like kind of what we were just talking about like hey things are done a uh, different way yeah um you know, I had I had some personal issues that I had to kind of get through. And um, man, Wendy was honestly, Wendy, I got to say this. It's not just about, you know, the course like Wendy like was on the phone with me. We went through all kinds of stuff. Uh, she had talked to my manager. We kind of had like a little powwow. Yes. Um, you know, uh, it was it was uh, I mean, how can I say I had, I had some things that I had to get straight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, like I know the one thing about me is I don't lack I don't lack confidence. That's you know I like can tell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good um, thing. I can no, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. But but you know it, it's just like with God. You know you know zeal without obedience is going to get you in trouble. 
and, yeah. and and that's uh you know that's kind of what was happening i had a lot of zeal but i didn't have the obedience and, and you know wendy i mean it could have been easy for wendy to sell the course and say okay here you go but that's yeah. not what wendy did wendy was like okay hold on i got you let me see what's going on and yeah. uh, you know wendy talked to my manager i mean to be i mean straight up i'm not saying that she's going to do that for everybody but you know going back to the beginning i built a relationship with wendy Wendy was like, yes. okay, I got you. Let me, you know, and then Wendy called me back and she goes, okay, here's the deal. Shut the F up. <laughs> I was like, so, you know, um, and I was like, okay, so, you know, and, and, and it was funny because I thought she was talking about just one in particular thing, right? So I went and, and I had said something and I didn't even think it had anything to do with anything else. And Wendy hit me back immediately. Didn't I just tell you to shut the F up? <laughs> I was like, put it. She goes, shut the F up. Like, like, that's it. She was like, that's it. I'm like, okay, Wendy, I'm sorry. What, you know, but, and I'm saying that because you need people like that in your corner. You don't need, yes, people, hey, do, do what you want, do it. You need people to say, no, dude, you messed this up. You, you know, that's it. You messed up. Yes. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, that I'm like super grateful for. My manager keeps me on point. My, you know, Wendy keeps me on point. You know, Amy, yes. Amy, Amy is a good friend now. I talk to Amy every now and then. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she, you know, like, she's like, I mean, I, look, there's a lot of people behind me. This isn't just me. No. And that's what you need. You got, you surrounded yourself with the team, the right people who believe. That's one of the, um, the elements in making this, you know, or the, the ingredients. And when we making this, you know, this thing, this meal that we serve in, you got to have all the right ingredients, man, or that, or that meal ain't gonna taste right. So, right. you know, that's what it's about. You got, but you start with you, you your attitude has impacted everything. You know, you, you're humble, you walk humble, but you walk yeah, humble and confident, which right. is powerful as an actor, as an entertainer. That is one of the main things you need to have. You know, you got to believe in yourself and your abilities. And you're doing this at a point in your life where it's like you're killing it. You know, you've done so much more, so many other things in the past. And now I look at you, you you're in Hollywood, man. You're killing it. You're <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you, you know, see, you know, there's a, there's a, that's another funny thing, too, is like they say you can't make it in Florida. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, here's something that that now i want to say something that goes completely against what most people say in hollywood yeah they'll tell you to have your package correct and they'll tell you to have your pictures correct and they'll tell you to have all this stuff but here's something that i learned in the music industry and i'm not saying don't get that done because like when you yeah. can't get it done definitely make sure that you always put the best foot forward right sometimes you can't wait for the perfect opportunity mm. you know um, when i started i didn't have a headshot a resume. I didn't have clips. I didn't have anything at all. And here I did my first coach and, and my very first audition. I did. I got. I landed the part for Ballers with, with Dwayne. Wow. And that's what absolutely zero. Now is that going to happen for everybody? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, what, but what I'm getting at is, is it that like, if you want so, and I learned this hard the hard way in the music industry is waiting for the perfect opportunity to have the perfect demo, the perfect this, and the perfect that to have the perfect package. Sometimes it just doesn't happen, right? And, and you just got to go out there. And I know a lot of casting directors, and forgive me because I don't I don't want to go against any casting directors, but I'm just saying for me personal in my personal life. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I'm 51 now. It's like I didn't have time to wait, right? You know, and I didn't have at that time. I didn't have. Well, I still kind of don't have money, but you know, yeah. I, but but uh, but I didn't have anything. You know, like I, yes. said, I, I was. You know, when I when I got ballers, I was like, I literally had an orange sticker on my door saying I had to get out. Man, you that's know, I, and uh, you know, it was um, you know, it's eye opening. So it's like, okay, I don't have the headshot, and I don't have this. And, and to be honest, when Lori called me, I didn't know nothing about acting. But, yeah. You know, but my friend said that, that hey, I wanted to get in that thing, and she, you know, she. Did, I was like, oh yeah, I could do that. Yeah, sure. You know, I didn't know nothing, but yeah, I could do it. <laughs> you know, um, and I just uh, I studied the. You know, it was only one line. And yeah. To be honest with you, I was I was going crazy over one line. You know, um, you know, because when you're first getting in there, and then you know, you step up on the scene, and there's Dwayne, and then you got Omar Benson Miller from CSI Miami and Eight Mile and all that. And, yeah. And then, you know, and think, oh, gosh, here I'm talking to J.D. I don't even know who he is. John David. <laughs> I, I didn't know who he was. I yeah. Didn't know. 
and he's a little bit, you know, now he's he's built, but he's a little bit smaller than me in yeah, his size right. goes. Yeah. So he comes around the corner, he gives me a, a bro hug. He goes, dude, we're gonna have fun. I thought he was like one of the hip hop dudes, like <laughs> You know, like I was like, yeah, cool, bro, let's go. And then when I found out who he is, I'm like, oh my gosh, like you know, like and, and you know, a lot of people don't know that he actually produced Book of Eli. Oh, you know, wow. yeah, yeah, he, like he's <laughs> dude been around. So and then of course he's Denzel's, you know, his son. So you know he's been acting yeah. for a while anyway. So you know, and then I got Birdman from the Miami Heat, and I'm and here I am, just little old me, no study, no nothing, no, you know. Um, but I wasn't gonna let nobody deny me of my opportunity. And then, um, and then, uh, what do you, um, it's funny because after that, I read about uh, Richard Branson was like, if anybody gives you an opportunity, yes, even if you don't know how to do it, take the opportunity. If you mess it up, you mess it up. But what happens if you succeed with it? Yes. Now you you know see so I was like, and that's funny because I mean I did that before I even read that, but I was like, man, that's that's a story that I live by. So for anybody watching this. You know, put yourself out there, and then as you put yourself out there, then go get everything done. Now I know casting directors will tell you, and this is just a personal choice for me, just you yeah. know, because I don't want to go against anybody in the industry by any means. Right. Because they'll tell you, you know, you got to be careful with that as well, because you go out there and you put yourself out there, and you're not putting the right image out there. You could wreck your career before it even gets started. So I will say that as well. Um, you just don't know, uh, but I always believe that there's always another opportunity. The, the thing is, is you just got to be able to take it. You know, um, there, there's always uh, there's something else I learned too because as long as you're in the public eye, somebody's always going to badmouth you. It, yeah. It's, it's going to happen one way or the other. Somebody's going to, you know, um, it's funny. I, I told a joke online the other day, and it was just a joke. And boy, the backlash that I got for the joke was just, <laughs> you know, uh, just, just crazy. So, um, you know. Uh, so with that being said, is like you're always going to have that, and the, the problem that we have is, as as humans is that we hold on to like, oh, this person said this, so I don't feel like I'm worthy anymore of of proceeding because this is how they look at me now. Yes. You know what? Forget how they look at you. Proceed anyway. It, yeah. it, you know, um, shake that off because once you get to the next level, then it's like, okay, that doesn't even exist anymore. So. Um, but that's a huge thing. We hold on to that. We hold on to that, to that, uh, you know, I guess you could say that label. Oh, you know, I did this, so I'm not worthy. Right. Uh, you know, um, you know, I, I learned this a long time ago, too, is like God forgave me before I even did it. Right. I, I just got to ask for it. So, you know, it's it's sealed. So, you know, um, I, I've had a couple of conversations with some friends and it's like, you know, how do you do that? Like, look. He already forgave me. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping that you can too. You know, like he already did it. You know, right. so, so uh, you know, so I don't know. Like my mind goes in a hundred. As you can see, my mind goes in a million, a million different cool. directions at once. So, um, is there any? Like, is there? Am I not answering anything? What, what else? Uh, what else can I help with? Man, we just having a cookout, man. We just <laughs> <laughs> okay. My my whole show was really uh, about shining the light on beautiful people who are really making an impact and they're really living their life that, you know, they're taking ownership and that's what you're doing. Uh, I think um, some of the things we get caught up in is like, should something be scripted? I don't script my show because I want people to feel comfortable. Like you doing, like we just talking, we sitting there, we had a cookout, you know, I don't say barbecue. I say we had a cookout, you know, <laughs> so we just, we just have, and one day you and I may be at a cookout and then you're saying it out. Oh, but, yeah. uh, I, mean, I love what you said too because you, I, when I listen, when you're talking, I just listen. That's how I feed off of you. But you talked about how you didn't know how this happened. You're standing here on ballers, you know, with all these, you know, big times, you know, people at a certain level. And I know how it happened. One, you showed up. Right. You showed up. Two, no, I'm going to say number one is God. I believe God positions us when we're ready for the right time, for the right things in our life. So I think that's one. And two, that you showed up and you showed up confidently and showed up as yourself. You didn't put on any airs. You were you. You were 100% shame. And I'm telling you, that's what we have to do. We have to roll and just show up as ourselves. Our faith is critical and show up as ourselves and the things that are meant for us come to us. So that's what you did. So I, I, that's, I listened closely and I was like, that's a huge principle on everything you said. You preached the sermon and I get the points. <laughs> Thank you. Know? That's a powerful thing, man. Uh, that's a gift I have. Uh, 
I'm very good at taking what people say and, and really bringing out, you know, the points and stuff. <laughs> That's actually, you know, um, I learned I learned um, a, a while ago. Uh, there, God gives us talents. Yes. And then, and then he gives us gifts. Yes. Uh, that gift, that's also the same gift that I have. Um, it's called prophecy. A lot of people think prophecy has to do with telling the future. Um, yeah. It's actually, prophecy is the ability to identify things the way they are and to be mm. able to take them the way they are. Um, and that was a gift, uh, you know, and you know that when you get around people, you can just feel the energy. Yes. Like, okay, I know whether I want to be here or not, you know. Um, yeah. And then sometimes if I don't know, I'll, I'll sit around and I'll just like, I'll just watch. But yeah, that's it. no, because I got to I got to figure it out or I'll, or I'll pray for discernment or whatever like that. But but um, and, and this is an industry where you definitely got to pray for discernment because you don't know who's coming at you for what reason. No so, doubt. you know, and now with all the social media, I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, I get DMs and and IMs and all kinds of stuff. And it's like, you know, hey, how are you doing? And, and the minute before you say, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I get the hey, how are you doing all the time? Yeah. And to me, that's like to me, that's like a setup question. It is. It's like, it's like yeah, what do you? Want? <laughs> you don't even know me. Like, what do you like? You know that, or or you get the friend request and they, and they haven't even introduced themselves and and you yeah. know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. A lot of weird stuff happens on social media. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, I want to um, I want to give a. There's a couple of shout outs that I want to sure. give. Um, one is Oscar Torre. Um, mm -hmm. And this dude has been like a brother to me. Uh, we did a, a, a thing called Silent Partners, which is based on um, Dave Icavetti, Fat Dave Icavetti, who was a Gambino captain. Okay. Uh, we did this through uh, Ciro DiPaggio, who was actually, um, he, how can I say this? Uh, he's, he was connected. He did 19 years um, for, uh, for racketeering. Um, okay. And uh, he's got a series called The Mob King, but we did, but, and he, the guy's got some amazing connections in Hollywood. He's doing some really great things, but, uh, but uh, Oscar and I wound up on the, on the same thing. We didn't see each other at the time, but we've connected through social media. And I mean, mm -hmm. he, I just want to give a huge thank you to him and let people know, like, like this dude has been like, you know, on my Instagram and, and we talk and, and we've done some things and, and I forgot to, you know, work with him behind the scenes on some stuff during COVID and uh, his wife, uh, Chudy, who is uh, an amazing actress and absolutely gorgeous. And I mean, like she, like it, it goes back to the relationship things, you know, um, and he's introduced me to some other people, Jay Haran, who yes. was an MMA fighter, a world champion. He's actually in the fight scene on Equalizer with, uh, with uh, Denzel. He was on, uh, I don't want to say Iron Fist. Uh, he, he's done some Marvel things. I had, you know, so I got some really great interviews. Uh, I was supposed to have an interview with um, with Keith Burke, who played Derek on the Haves and Have Nots. Yes. Uh, Oscar played, uh, he played uh, Benny Malone on the Have Nots. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like, it, all these people have just been, you know, so supportive of me and everything. I mean, like, I could go to my Instagram right now and they'll be like, hey, how you doing? Just on some real stuff, man. And I'm just, uh, I say that because... You know the relationships. I can't say it enough. Music, yeah. business, whatever. Relationships are everything, and I'm just so grateful that these people are just like in my corner. I mean, they, you know, it's it's amazing. Man, I, I I love that about you because you're giving you're giving the people who've been there for you. You're giving them some flowers too. <laughs> you're showing love. And yeah, love. yeah, no, no, because like you, you know, like you know, as you know, there's levels to everything. Yes, and the people that I'm mentioning, they they're on a level that that I could just hope to be a part of. You know what I mean? And, you know, uh, the, the relationships, uh, you know, when you get familiar, you know, and you get brought up, it makes it just so much easier. Right. Um, you know, these people are here just, you know, just even say hello. How you doing? I tell my regular friends, you know, like I'm a punk when it comes to, to friendship yeah. because, you know, I'm a loyal person. So it's like if if you and I are talking and we're friends, and I tell everybody this, men and women, because some 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 men call me a you know a, a beach, you know, um, yeah. because I tell them like, look, dude, I'm 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 calling to check up on you. Like, why are you acting funny? Like, that's just how I do, right? You know? Um, and if 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 I see that you're not showing me the same respect, you know, brush your shoulders off, keep it going. But it's it's uh, you know, that's how I am. You know, yeah. so for, for industry people who have already made it, in my opinion, 
to be giving me this love and I can't even get love on my regular people. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, it's like, come on, like what's going on. But you know, um, maybe that's a lesson in itself. Like, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm stepping up and, and you know, Hey, not everybody's going to step up with you. Well, there's a song, uh, circle gets smaller. Everybody can't go. The lyrics is in the song. <laughs> you know? Oh man. I, I like that. Uh, that's, that's something else that I learned too, because in the music industry, um, you know, I, I, didn't, I just didn't know the business and thing, but that's another story altogether. But I had so many people around me, but they weren't helping. They weren't, they weren't, you know, um, or it just, it wasn't, they shouldn't have been there, to be honest with you, uh, in, in my life. And uh, when, when I almost lost everything, you know, um, and, and I got my conversation with God, and I don't want to freak nobody out, like, oh my gosh, the guy's talking to God all the time. But, um, <laughs> No, you know what? Let me let me let me call a quick time out. Feel free. Everybody talk about everything else. No, no, I got you. The reason why I say it like that is yeah. I, I like to put, and I always now I will never talk uh, stop talking about God. Yeah. But I want to make sure that the people who don't understand God the way I do, yeah. that I could put it into a tangible meaning, like I could put it into a realistic thing that you can identify with for the people who don't know. It's like, like anything that you don't know. I I know it's going to be a weird analogy, but I say cryptocurrency right now. I'm just learning about that. That's why I'm going to say it like this. Yes. So long I've been so um, uh, negative towards cryptocurrency mm -hmm. because I didn't know nothing about it. Right. Until somebody presented it in a way that made sense. So that's the way I like to do with God. It's like I don't want you know I don't want God to be this mytholo mythological creature that you don't ever see. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. So, so um, when I talk about it, I want it to be okay. I can understand that. I can understand where he's coming from. That's that's the way I mean to to put it. That you know, um, that people can understand where I'm getting at when I have my daily conversations. Because I don't have prayer. I have a daily conversation that goes from the time that I wake up to to the time I go to sleep. That's what keeps my mind uh, insane with everything going around. You know, and that, is that is That is plan. That yeah, no, I mean, like I'm saying, I, I try to make it, a, you know, because to the people who don't know, when you say prayer, yeah. they, get a, they get anxiety, like, oh my gosh, I got to pray. No, man, <laughs> just have a conversation. He's always listening. Yeah. So that's why I say I want to make it tangible. Um, yeah. And I kind of even got off of what I was talking about. Cause, <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, uh, I mean, I forgot what I was getting. You see, look, I got into God for a second. So, uh, <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> I know we got about probably about three minutes left. My producer uh, okay. just, just sent me the text about, "Hey, wrap up." <laughs> so we got to get ready to wrap. But uh, you're, you're, uh, what I want you to uh, do is, if you can tell the audience and everybody who's been listening, how they can keep in touch with you and you know stay in track what's going on with your career. So go ahead and drop it for you. Absolutely, and I actually, uh, man, uh, everything, every everything, everything is all actor Shane Costa. It's all one word. Just like you see down there, like right on my name, it's all, act I forgot to put the at symbol, but it's it's actor Shane Costa, all my social media, uh, Instagram. Um, I do answer my Instagram. I go live every now and then. I've just learned how to clean it up. So I just erased about uh, 1,200 posts to clean it up and make it look more presentable and stuff like that. Um, yes. but, but I do answer everybody. I do, you know, um, you know, I'm very, uh, you know, easy to get in contact with if you, you know, DM me. Uh, on Clubhouse, I'm actor Shade Costa. If you're not on Clubhouse and you don't have an iPhone, I highly suggest uh, that you go get one. Uh, man. Because, uh, man, I'm learning about money. I'm learning about Bitcoin. I'm learning about social media. Um, I'm learning about monetiza uh, monetization. Yes. Um, for doing certain things. I mean, there's. I'm just learning. Like right now, I'm just. Uh, I'm a student all over again. So everything is at Actor Shane Costa. Please follow me, follow me, follow me. Make sure that you follow this uh, podcast and this broadcast and make sure that you follow everybody because now it's not just about following people. It's about learning something. Um, and yes. hopefully I got something to give back. And uh, I just want to say, look, thank you so much, Rodney. I love everybody. Um, and here, I just want to end on this. Um, there's something that I learned a long time ago. Love anything and everything for absolutely no reason. People say that that's kind of... Mm. That's kind of silly. But I'm gonna show you something. I could love a person. I might not have. A, I might not love what they do. I could love a place, but I might not like what's happening in it. I could yeah. love a thing, but I might not like what's happening 
along with it or going inside of it. But I could love everything. I just don't have to like what's happening with it. So, um, you know, learn to love. I mean, everybody bleeds, everybody worries. They're worried about medical, they're worried about family, their kids, their parents, whatever. And for that reason, we have the same commonality and I love every one of you. Thank you so much for having me. Man, usually I give a closing comment. I don't even need to do one with that. I was like, <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you, Shane, for being a guest on my show. When we end the broadcast, don't leave uh, the, the uh, broadcast because we won't be live anymore. I want to talk for a couple minutes, just about two or three minutes. Got you. So don't, so don't leave. I um, want to thank you for being a guest on the show. Everybody, thank you to all the listeners. We have 12 countries where we have listeners now on our show, so I'm very grateful to you all. Remember to go to YouTube, subscribe to the Produce Your Own Life Network. You know, it's very important. It's a movement and it's growing. Go to Apple, Spotify, iHeart, Google. That Produce Your Own Life podcast is available. Make sure you rate it on Apple. Apple is funny about it. You got to give it a rating. Give it a five star. And YouTube, make sure you like it. So keep it in the algorithm, the rotation, show love. The show is about lifting people up. The show is about bringing, helping people to see their purpose fulfilled in their life. So that's what I learned what I do. And with that being said, life is a script. It's time to write yours. We out. <laughs> Thank you for listening and watching the Produce Your Own Life podcast with Rodney Damon Collins. Be sure to rate, like, subscribe, and share on all podcast and social media platforms. If you have questions or would like to be a guest on the show, Feel free to reach out to us anytime at ProduceYourOwnLifeTV at gmail.com. Remember, life is a script. It's time to write your story. Until next time, produce your own life.